All right, guys, LS Swap Lexus SC wiring episode part two. Let's do this. If you haven't seen part one yet, check it out right here. Otherwise, let's get started. All right, so both fans are now hooked up together and they go up along here in this loom behind the driver's side headlight and then it collects all the wires there. It goes up along the top of the radiator support to the passenger side over here where it collects more wires down there. And then on this side, everything is grounded out to the same ground point back here. And it looks like kind of a mess, but I've tested it and all the grounds do work. I gotta take all of this tape off. Um, but they all go through this little guy right here, sort of like junction area. Um, and then from there, we go up and along the engine bay here to the hole in the firewall going into the cab. So all of the wiring for the front of the car all goes through right here. And then all the engine stuff all goes through that right there. All right, now I have to do the same thing for the wiring in the trunk here. And ignore all this stuff. This is all old uh, factory wiring harness or what's left of it. Uh, this is what I'm focusing on, and this is all of the tail lights, reverse lights, wiring, that kind of stuff. But as you can see, this is much messier. Well, this part's not going to look great because there's a whole bunch of wires here that all use factory splices, and um, I kind of don't want to undo those because I know that they work, and they were done by the factory, and I'd rather have a factory splice than my splice. So I'm just going to kind of bunch these all up and just wrap them in tape and uh, hopefully that'll keep it nice and clean. You know, not exactly a factory job, but I think that's fine. It looks compact enough and it's nice and clean, so it should be good. It uh, goes along here and then it's ground out through here to that guy right there. And then up here, it picks up the blue fuel pump line right there and goes through into the cabin. So a really great thing about going with a pre-made wiring harness for the engine is that you get this kind of pre-made uh, power distribution block or you know fuse block and it has a uh, relay for the ignition and a relay for the fuel pump already built into it so all I need to do according to the instructions is run my 10 gauge line into this port right here on the relay and then for this one it comes out of here to the switch panel that I've already set up so really it's as simple as just wiring this guy in here and then one over there to the switch on my switch panel and my fuel pump should be ready to go All right, now that we have that in place, I'm going to run this up and around the dash to the back of the switch panel. And then I just need to take measurements to cut it down, uh, install my little connector there, and then pop it in. And then my fuel pump will be ready to go. Well, originally my plan for the wiring was to go through this hole right here in the firewall. And I had blocked off this plate and that one up there, which is where some other factory wiring and stuff went through. And I was just gonna use this one and then kind of get two more plates and kind of just make a little you know, block off there once the wiring goes through. But I'm realizing that I don't like this big jumble of wires right there. It's just all jammed against the firewall and the passenger valve cover here. And it's getting in the way of all these other things and it just looks messy. And I think it's going to be unreliable being this close to the exhaust right there. So this is going to be kind of a pain in the ass. But I think what I should do is pull all the wiring out of here. And then up here is the block off panel that I made from the factory AC lines. I think I'm going to drill a hole through that panel right there and uh, run my main cable here through that. 
and then block off this piece entirely. I have to unhook everything from the engine that's already hooked up and bring it back through inside the cabin to go back through a hole here again, which it's unfortunate, but at least I will have it done the correct way and I won't feel like I've kind of half-assed this whole thing. And it'll be safer because in the long run, my uh, loom here will not be wedged against the firewall and it'll be far enough away from the exhaust to not have any issue with, uh, you know, melting wires and stuff. Which, for a safety thing and not causing fires, is pretty important. So the instructions for this harness from PSI Conversion says to use a two inch hole saw to put a hole in the firewall so this loom can go through and it can use this grommet right here. So I'm gonna use a two inch hole saw that I just got from Home Depot and put a hole right in the middle of this patch panel that I made well over a year ago. And uh, hopefully that will fit perfectly and I'll be able to run my cabling and everything the correct way. Well, it's through. Unfortunately, some of the welds popped off on this side of the plate here, so I'm gonna have to re-weld that. But I don't have any welding gas right now, uh, shielding gas, so I have to go get some of that on Monday, and I can uh, touch up the welds on this plate and make a new plate down here. Oh, that looks so much better. All right, I'm gonna rewire the engine again, and then I can figure out how much slack I need on my main loom here, and then I'll slide the extra through the grommet, and then you know, tie it up under the dash somewhere, but this will be much cleaner in the engine bay and inside the car. I just found, I just found my missing tripod foot. <laughs> That's great. Yay. Much, much better. Now you can see where it goes through my grommet on my little welded plate there, and then it goes up and it attaches with zip ties up to my crash bar up top there, and then it just goes down on the side here. Well, in the daylight, it looks much cleaner, obviously, and much safer than the old version of having wires running everywhere. Now I'm gonna figure out how to run my wires from the front of the car, headlights and radiator fans and such, through the firewall. And rather than running this up and around to the same area, I'm just gonna put a new hole right in my little cap here that I made. And I took an old factory uh, like rubber cap from the engine bay and drilled a hole in the middle of it. And that's gonna be my little grommet. I don't have any actual, fat, you know, like real grommets here, but this will work just great. So I'll drill a new hole in this, the same size as this guy, and then I can just run this kind of straight through there into the uh, cabin. So this is the wiring harness that goes to the windshield wipers, and I separated this out from the main engine bay harness from the SC. And uh, this gray clip here goes in through the hole in the firewall, up under the cowl to a gray clip under there. And I just can run this up there, use this for my little gasket, which is all the factory parts, and then run the rest of the wires in through the firewall to my switch panel. Now this is a five wire setup. So there are five wires going from the clip here um, to the rest of the wiring harness. And uh, after doing online research, it turns out that the white and black stripped one right here, or striped one, um, which has a little grounding strap on it, is obviously my ground, which means the other four wires are used for different settings on your, you know, the windshield wiper stock, which means one is super fast speed, one is like a slower speed, and then the other two are intermittent, so they kind of go forward and stop, and you know, that kind of thing. Um, I only need to have the fastest one because if it's going to be raining, I need to have rain gone as fast as possible. So I'm going to separate out only the fastest wire here and then the ground strap, run one wire to my switch, and then ground it off somewhere on the chassis. So um, what I'm going to have to do though is figure out which one is which because I have not found online a, uh, like a wiring chart as to what goes where. So I'm going to take my 12 volt source, attach this up to my clip, and then just test each wire and actually see what the windshield wipers do. I have the ground wire to the negative on the battery, so hopefully when I touch these other wires to the positive terminal, we will see the wipers do something. Actually, I took off the driver's side one, so it's just the passenger wiper that should hopefully do something. So let's see what we got here. That seems pretty fast and very dirty. That's the red and blue stripe. That seems to be pretty quick. Blue with the red stripe is slow. Blue with the white stripe does nothing. Solid blue also does nothing. All right, so I guess it's just me red with blue stripe. That seems to be the winner. Cool.
So now we have this hole plugged and my wires are running all neatly tucked underneath the cowl there going into the passenger side. After many hours of research, this is my plan for my wiring. It looks like a mess because it is a mess because I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm hopefully going to make this stuff work out. All right, so I picked up this Lexan from Home Depot for like $4.50. I have a bunch of other stuff I got from Amazon, like these terminal strips, a fuse block here, and then I have my relays and my ends here for my wires. And this is kind of what I'm going to do is just kind of lay it out like this. Uh, embarrassingly enough, I put these five relays on here, but I cannot get them apart anymore. Uh, I, I've tried everything from like wedging screwdrivers in there and prying back tabs and they're not coming apart. So I'm going to leave it on there for now, which is fine because I'm sure I'll find a way to need five relays in the future. But for now, I think what I'm going to do is just set my fuse blocks in like this. I'll probably just do one for now because I only need to have, this has enough for eight and I only, I only need to have three active right now, uh, three relays. So what I'm going to do, I think, is put this right here put these guys kind of right here, leaving enough room in the future to upgrade to and have another strip like that. And then my fuse block will go up here. And then the plan is going to be to mount this whole Lexan panel with my same little isolators that I use for my ECU on all four corners like this. I might cut this strip down a little bit just to save on space if I need to. And then I'm going to mount the whole thing to this aluminum plate right here and then cut this down and mount that inside the chassis under the dashboard. They came with all these wires already pre-wired and these are 16 and 18 gauge wires and that's going to be fine for my actual switches but for my accessory power and uh, going out to each thing like my wipers and stuff I'm going to upgrade to my 12 gauge wire here because uh, the highest amp I'm going to need in here is 20 amps for my windshield wipers and that's going to require me to run uh, 12 gauge wiring from everything that I could find online. Who knows if that's accurate or not, but that's kind of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go through and remove my blue and my red wires here and replace these with my 12 gauge wiring and then I can start running all my wires to my fuse box and to my terminal post. I also went through and removed the yellow wires, which are my 87A uh, circuits, which I'm not going to be using for any of these three uh, relay. So I removed that as well as the power and the accessory wires from each relay. Next I'm going to run my 12 gauge wiring from here uh, where my relays will go down to uh, the terminal post here and then to the fuse box. And now you don't need to have a terminal post but it makes things much cleaner when you install it. Uh, and also later on if you need to change around your relays or whatever uh, you can just change the fuse whatever size fuse you need and not worry about changing the wiring around if you make the wires uh, big enough from the beginning which is what I'm going to do with this 12 gauge. So there's my panel all bolted in. Now I can get my wires run through here. All right, cool. So now we have the first connection from the fuse block up to this little wire to my terminal post up to my other little wire to the relay. All right, well that took a while, which is, you know, par for the course for me doing all this stuff when I have no idea what I'm doing. We have our fuse block here, our terminal posts, and then the relays, and um, we have our four wires here, and it is four because I figured out what this is going to be because I completely forgot about uh, a fourth relay. So we have now our headlights, wipers, uh, reverse lights, and then our radiator fans. And I'm sure there's going to be a fifth one, or maybe even a sixth one as well, and I do have room for those over here, and I have my other block here that I can use, you know, just like that, basically, if I need it. And I think I'm going to mount up here my PSI, the uh, relays and the fuse block that came with my PSI harness will go up here as well. Uh, we have our group ground going right here, and because these are so far away that the lines wouldn't hit over here, I'm going to make this end block here as well also um, be a ground. And then the one, two, three, four, five, six of these in the middle will do my six relays up here if and when I add two more. So um, that's a pretty good start. These white wires go to uh, my switches and then the wires up here, which I have not installed yet because I haven't, you know, this has to be in the car before I can install that, will be going to each actual thing, like my wipers, headlights, fans, etc. So for these fuses, I brought in my factory fuse block from the SC and I have all my factory fuses here and I have my 
an internal fuse sort of diagram here and the one from the engine bay, which is really nasty because it's been outside for about two years. But uh, I can go through here and figure out what each part of the factory car requires, what type of amperage for my fuses, and then I can go through and pull one of these out, seal it from there, and pop it into here. So for example, my wipers require a 20 amp fuse. So these yellow ones are 20 amps, so I will steal this from there, and I think I'm going to make my fourth relay here, my wiper relay. So this one goes down to here, goes into here. And then I just pop that right inside there, and now I have my fuse ready to go for my wipers. So all I need to do now is go through and figure out what all my other fuse requirements are, seal them from here, pop them in this guy, and I should be pretty much done. And this one piece of aluminum, I've had this for about a year, and I keep finding more and more uses for it. So I think I'm gonna get something like this. And then I'll just cut this guy out and drill some holes for these guys. My drill just broke. This can no longer unscrew itself too. I, I can't put another bit in. What is going... Man, I need all new tools. My tools are so janky. Come on. Cool, there we have the panel, all ready to go. So I'll, I need to go under the car and measure, there's two holes I need to drill to mount this to the chassis, but once that's drilled up, this whole thing weighs probably maybe two pounds or so, so not too bad, and I think I can, I can use the two holes here on the uh, chassis to hold that all in place, hopefully. I am gonna go through later on at some point and just cut a big piece out of here because I don't need to have all of that metal there just to support this little piece of uh, Lexan, but. I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to put the other uh, PSI fuse block here and I have room down here in the future for more relays and everything else because I'm pretty sure I need to have my power windows relay for now and uh, some other stuff, maybe some other lights and stuff in here. So that'll be in the future, but this will be enough to get the car started and running. So I made a template using kind of the poke and pray method where I, I made a cardboard piece the same size as my aluminum plate there and just kind of lined it up and then poked holes until I found the actual holes that were the uh, things going to bolt into the chassis. So I traced them and I'm really, really hoping these line up. Hey, look at that, it works. All right, there's the panel installed. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think it's going to be a nice, reliable setup. It looks kind of delicate, but with the little rubber vibration dampeners there, I think it's going to be you know, pretty reliable as far as, you know, not falling apart on the track, hopefully. So this is the PSI fuse block and relays that came with the harness, and this is everything I made, obviously. And then I still have to go through, and these wires in this black loom here come from the back of the car. Those have to be connected up to my relays, and the same thing from the wires from up here that you can't see from the front of the car. And then these white wires here go to my switch panel and then I have to ground out this terminal block there. So yeah, there's the panel, all good to go. I have to get the wiring all connected up to my switch panel here, which will be in the next episode, as well as getting my battery installed. It's gonna go in this box right there and then run my cables up along here, up into that whole area up there. So it's really exciting. Making progress. Ignition, this one should be my fuel pump. So this one should be my radiator fans. Hear that? My fans are working. Oh my god, it works. It totally works.